kitchen and I was trying to cook up some stir fry. I had my chicken had been marinating in soy sauce and garlic powder all day, and I had my oven. It was all or my stove top was all nice and hot. My pan was ready to go. All I had to do was chop up some vegetables so I could throw it in with my meat and get the stir fry really going. So I reach for my onion and I start cutting it and I get to a certain point and slip. My knife has to land somewhere, so it lands on the softest spot I can find, which is my finger. If any, has any of this happened to you guys before, where you yeah. cut your finger? Nope. Well, <laughs> well, well um, unless somebody is going to be preparing your food uh, in the future, more than likely you're going to have to do some cooking in the kitchen, and you might have to use a knife. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about some essential knives that you need in your kitchen, so that you don't have to go out and buy all these other fancy knives, really only need three knives. And I'm also gonna be talking about proper handling and um, the high and low cut. So, firstly, uh, I'm gonna be talking about the three essential knives. So what you really need is you want a chef's knife, which looks like this. They um, do come in a variety of shapes, but they're typically about seven to 10 inches in length, and they have a very curved belly underneath. And then you also want to have a serrated utility knife. And serrated utility knives are useful for um, cutting through waxy surfaces such as uh, peppers or um, an apple, something that's a little bit tougher that maybe your chef's knife could not fulfill. And, um, and then you also want to have your paring knife, which is a short blade like this. And this is for all your little detail work. So, to begin with, I'm sorry, also this right here is a Santofu knife, and I know personally, before learning about knives, I would use this knife for nearly everything. It seemed like, oh, okay, it's a knife, it cuts everything, but actually, um, it's only used for herbs and little things, like uh, small fruits, things along those lines, so that's good to know. And the longer the blade, the safer it is. So, uh, because you have a lot more handling on it, you won't slip as easily. You're not handling, uh, you're not trying to force a small knife to cut a large item, basically. All right, so, now I'm gonna teach you about proper handling. Uh, all right, so I'll demonstrate my chef's knife. What you want is you wanna have three fingers, your back fingers, all the way up against the neck of the blade, and you wanna put your index finger comfortably right there, and your thumb just tucked like that on the other side, so that you have a nice, comfortable feel. Your wrist is loose. You don't wanna um, have your finger on top, which I know is what a lot of people do, because what happens is you put a lot of strain on your wrist, and your arm, it, basically your hand cramps up so that you're not able to really work on the cutting motion properly. So you wanna have your finger tucked, your thumb on this side, and your three fingers pressed up against the neck. And then, I'm gonna teach you about the three points to cutting. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start out at the first point. Tip to the board, and you're gonna roll forward until you hit the back of the belly, and then that's point one. You're gonna come back up to point two, and you're gonna drag the blade back to point three. So, when you have it in a swift motion, it will look something like this. And so you'll be at one, and then you'll be working your way in a smooth motion. Now, it's a little bit difficult for me to demonstrate because I'm trying to show you, but what you want is an imaginary X on your cutting board. So you're gonna have your uh, vegetable, however, whatever vegetable you might be working with, and you're gonna bring this X point so that your vegetable or fruit is aligned with uh, perpendicular to your blade so that whenever you come down you're up and you come down make that cut up down up down also I just made a no-no you're not supposed to force feed the food in <laughs> I'm sorry um, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to tuck your fingers with your food like so so that you don't hurt yourself so you tuck your fingers and you want to use your back fingers and force the food through using those fingers until you're able, I'm not very good at this, I apologize. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's a demonstration of the low cut. Now for the high cut, 
of a high cut is used whenever you have to raise your arm up off of the cutting board. So what you want to do is first get a good grasp of your fruit. You don't want it to wobble around because then you could really injure yourself and that's how, uh, that's how you cut yourself and things happen when you don't have a good sturdy base. So what you want to do is first get a good grasp of your apple, place the blade like so, and you're still going to do the same one, two, three motion. So you're still going to point downwards and push down so like that. And all right, so my blade got stuck. Don't worry, you can do the motion again. And so I'm going to pull back on three. <laughs> this apple's a little more difficult than the ones I practice with. And push again to complete the cut and come back out. And so you have safely cut your fruit and use the proper uh, technique in doing so. So when it comes to the low cut, you wanna keep it to the board, point to the board, and slide down, slide forward, back up to the point, and down, forward, back up. And you learned about the high cut, which was the apple. Um, if you ever find that your knives are getting dull, you can actually um, use a coffee mug, a ceramic coffee mug, turn it over, and you know how the bottom is usually unglazed, that's the ceramic part. So all you have to do is grab your knife and point at an angle and just basically sharpen it and it'll resharpen your knife and you don't have to go out and buy a fancy knife sharpener. So that's a good tool. In conclusion, uh, you've learned that, um, you've learned the three types of knives that you need to use or that you should have in your kitchen, which are the chef's knife, the serrated utility knife, and the paring knife, oh, that's the utility knife, <laughs> and the paring knife. So these are the three essential knives that you should have in your kitchen, which will make cooking a lot easier so that you don't uh, use the wrong tools and perhaps 